Hey guys, welcome back to the channel for another military video. Please don't forget to go down and hit the subscribe button if you do enjoy the channel. It would be much appreciated. Uh, I do enjoy making these military content videos for you guys. Um, I enjoy putting out the information I wish I had uh, before I joined all those years ago. Um, and I'm trying to do that for the future uh, military members that come in. So you guys kind of go in um, knowing a little bit uh, that would better prepare you for your journey in the military. So today we're going to go over how you actually join the military. Uh, there's a lot of like myths and rumors out there um, that kind of make it like that make it seem like you don't have an option on what you do um, in the Navy, for instance. I'm gonna obviously gear this video towards the Navy um, because that's what I do, or that's what I'm in, obviously. So uh, first thing first, obviously, is you contact the recruiter. You go talk to them at the recruiting office. So I know some recruiters will come see you uh, at your home. Once you get that knocked out of the way and, and all the initial paperwork uh, and drug tests, you will um, then get. Uh, scheduled to go to MEPS, which is um, the Military Entry, Entry Process Center, I believe is what it stands for. I am Commander Kathy Maser. I'm the Commanding Officer of the Boston Military Entrance Processing Station. MEPS is the place where applicants come to process into the Armed Forces, and we are responsible for ensuring quality accessions into the Armed Forces during both peacetime and during times of mobilization. Well, the day starts, given that the uh, applicant has stayed at the contract hotel overnight, they are given a wake-up call at 4 in the morning, breakfast there at the hotel, and so they're here at the MEPS shortly after 5 o'clock in the morning. Um, and there is where you uh, begin your process into enlisting. So the first thing that you do is you'll go and you take your ASVAD, which is essentially the SATs, but for the military. Um, so that's the first thing that you will do. Um, and then after that, you go ahead and do your med, uh, your physical. There's like a medical department at MEPS where you'll go um, give blood, do your vision test, hearing test, um, basic like stretches and stuff. You know, they'll have you strip down to your underwear and you'll do different uh, pretty much stretches and maneuvers and doctors watch you to make sure that you don't have any kind of physical um, deformities or uh, anything like that. They'll also go through some of your medical records um, that you provided. They don't have access to your civilian medical records, so whatever you tell them is whatever they base their decision off of. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. I'm Sergeant First Class Ketchum. I'm the Operations NCIC here at the Boston MEPS. We reassure them throughout the day, all the time. I mean, yeah, when they first come up on the floor, uh, you know, they come very early in the morning. Um, once we get them uh, signed into the MEPS, we get them all in one area and we give them the morning brief. Once we get down here, you're going to go over to the medical folks. You're going to get a medical briefing and run through that process, okay? Once the briefing is done, you're going to get an exam. You're going to meet with the physicians, okay, and you're going to go through that. Once you're done in medical, you're going to go down to your service liaisons. You're going to sit down with a counselor. And you guys are going to negotiate a job, all right? Once that's complete, you'll come over to the processing section. All right, we'll do what we have to do over there. Get you ready to swear in. Take the oath of enlistment, and then we'll set up your transportation to take you home. Um, so once you complete all that, uh, the way it was done for me is uh, once we completed that, they actually put us up into a hotel uh, where we spent the night, and then we went back to MEPS the next morning. Some people, they just have you go back home and you meet the recruiter back at the base um, the next morning, but that's all based on your recruiting district. So once you finish that first day of taking your ASVAD and doing your medical screening, you then go back the second day, and that's where you uh, pick your job, or your rate, as we call it in the Navy. So. Uh, they kind of take everything that you did the day before, your medical uh, evaluation, and your score in the ASVAD, and they plug it up against this matrix of the available jobs that are available that month in the Navy, because everything's based off manning and numbers, just like in the civilian world. So if a certain rate has too many people that month already, um, then obviously they're not accepting any more sailors into that rate for that month. So you'll go talk to a, uh, a detailer, and he uh, will sit you down and say, hey, uh, you qualify for this job, um, sometimes they give you one, sometimes they give you a couple. I believe I had like five or six that were offered to me. And uh, they kind of give you a brief description on what each job does. And they're like, hey, uh, pick one. Now this is where a lot of people get it uh, kind of intimidated. Um, and they do that on purpose, they kind of intimidate you to make a decision right then and there. But you have zero obligation to make a decision. If you go into MEP saying, hey, I really want this rate, and uh, when you go and sit down with the detailer, and that rate that you really want isn't available, there is nothing holding you back from saying, I'll come back next month and, uh, and see if the rate I want's available. You'll still be in debt, you'll still um, be under your recruiter, um, and it will just make them have to do their job uh, to get you what you want. So that's my biggest thing is, um, I mean, it didn't happen to me, but I come across a lot of people in the Navy who were pressured into their job because uh, they made it seem like that's what they had to pick, and that's not the case at all. The Navy doesn't own you, uh, the military doesn't own you yet, so you can make the decision. Um, 
And that's the biggest point I want to get across in this video, uh, is just don't get pressured into anything. Um, especially if you intend to make the Navy your, your career, uh, it's going to be the job that you're going to do for the next 20 years of your life. So make sure that it's something that you want to do. Now, once you're in the Navy, um, in certain uh, scenarios, you can switch jobs. I've done it uh, after being in for four years. I switched rates. Um, there's always opportunity like that once you get in the Navy, and they try to sell you that. Like, uh, you know, hey, enlist with this job now, and then we can change it later on. Don't give yourself that headache right off the bat. That's just one, one less thing that you really don't need to worry about. Just make sure when you sign those initial papers uh, at MEPS, it's the job that you want. If they don't offer you the job that you want right away, say, hey, I'll come back. And a lot of times, they'll make it happen right then and there. 